Good evening. Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Bill Durrance. I'm the second district city councilman or alderman, uh, which is this district. And I want to welcome everyone for coming out tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, we also have some guests who will be speaking. Uh, Gordon, where's Gordon? Gordon, Gordon Denny from our Park and Tree Department will we'll be coming up to, to talk to us in a couple of minutes and give us a lot more details about what's going on here. Uh, we also have uh, the partners in this project uh, from the Downtown Neighborhood Association, Amy Brock, and from Historic Savannah Foundation, the CEO, Daniel Carey, and from Visit Savannah, Joe Marinelli. So um, thank you guys for being here. And thank you very much for all the effort you've put into doing this. Um, I, I think this is great timing, uh, which means somebody within the city staff probably organized it that way. Uh, and, and that is that yesterday was the 284th anniversary of the founding of the, uh, the this colony initially and now state of Georgia. So we are uh, essentially celebrating our 284th anniversary uh, of our founder, uh, James Oglethorpe, uh, the monument that we're going to be uh, addressing here tonight. And in thinking about that, one of the things that uh, just based on the way many of us tend to think about Savannah, sometimes in our better moments and sometimes in our less than better moments, uh, I'm reminded of something one of my colleagues on city council said recently, uh, Brian Foster, uh, made the comment that when James Oglethorpe was getting ready to go back to England, he said, don't change anything until I get back. And uh, it seems like we've taken that message to heart sometimes. Uh, but I think we're doing a little bit better and hopefully we'll continue to do better. In 1815, Chippewa Square was created. And it was named for uh, an, an event called the Battle of Chippewa. Uh, the Battle of Chippewa was part of the War of 1812. And in the War of 1812, and actually July of 1814, the very inexperienced, very young army uh, of, the America, of, of America faced uh, the British, uh, the very experienced British troops. And what was happening at the time was the Napoleonic Wars in England, were, uh, I'm sorry, in Europe, were ending. And those troops were going to be brought to Canada and to America. And so the idea was that we needed to win. We needed to win. In the first two years of the War of 1812, we had a lot of setbacks. But the, uh, the president, James Madison at the time, brought in a whole new uh, general officer corps of young men, and they created a whole new approach to training the Army that was a much more unified approach instead of the very uh, uh, disparate uh, militia uh, approach to this. And we actually won one of our first major encounters in the Battle of Chippewa, which was along the Niagara River, Niagara River in Canada. And Chippewa, spelled slightly differently there, uh, was the, that Battle of Chippewa was the inspiration for the naming of this square when it was created in 1815, a year after that battle. There have been many efforts to create a monument to James Oglethorpe, beginning even before the war between the states in 1859. But it eventually came to a culmination in, uh, in the early 1900s. Between 1901 and 1910, Daniel Chester French, uh, the sculptor who also did the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, uh, created the statue that we have here of James Oglethorpe. I learned something recently in a visit to the Georgia State Capitol. The fourth floor of the Georgia State Capitol has a museum to Georgia history, which is a fascinating uh, experience if you get the chance to do it. And one of the things I discovered was the Lincoln Memorial was actually created with Georgia marble. Uh, I'm sorry to say, in, in a sense, as beautiful as this is, that the marble here was done with Tennessee marble, which... <laughs> was apparently a missed opportunity to use a local contractor. Uh, we need to do better. Okay. So uh, the monument was created, and 200 years later, exactly 200 years later, in 2015, a group of local organizations got together to try to address the issue of lighting 
uh, in, in managing the, the presentation of the square. Uh, that group of organizations was the city of Savannah, of course, which I'm here to represent in, in my poor fashion, and the Downtown Neighborhood Association, the Historic Savannah Foundation, and Visit Savannah. And what I want to do now is bring up uh, Gordon Denny, who will do a much better job of presenting uh, the Savannah side of this story and how all of this uh, lighting uh, and uh, improvement of the square uh, proceeded. Gordon. Thank you, Alderman Durrance. Um, so actually to give you an idea, we have to back up to 2012. Uh, in the fall of 2012, we renovated this square as well as Wright Square. And in the midst of doing that, um, we decided at that time to redo the lighting for the monuments in Wright Square. And this was coming on the heels of a lighting uh, committee that had gone around and looked at all the lighting in the square as far as all the lampposts. And at that time we said, well, here's an opportunity to start talk, talking about the monuments. So we go in there and my then boss, uh, the previous director said, just get with the lighting company, figure out what the best new stuff is and let's put it up there and let's, let's make it better. Let's use what we've done and uh, build upon that. Um, somewhere about a month later, we get in a conversation with Artist Wood and we meet Christian Satil and we start talking about how to properly, like, really light a monument. Not just how to change up the light bulbs to be more efficient or how to, to lessen the orange glow, how to really look at these things and, and figure the best way to, to cast shadows, to, to, to make them readable, to make them presentable from both the street and from up close. So we do that down there. And uh, it turns out wonderful. It took about a year and a half. I think we were done uh, December 2013. I'm sorry, about a year. Uh, we got it lit. It did well. And artists looked at me and said, all right, well, where's next? Let's go to the general. Let's get the general lit. And I said, well, we, we, we got to get funding. So from the city side, we started CIP. From her side, she just goes and starts asking for money. And she beat us. In 2015, before we could get our CIP in place, she comes up and says, I'm ready. Let's start working. So. We begin the process again, looking at this one and how we're going to light it. And uh, about a year and a half later, again, we're doing mock-ups. We're sitting out here with Christian at night. We've got lighting companies. We're putting them at different angles. And sure enough, we, we came up with a plan. We developed the plan, put it down on writing, figured we we're going to have to add a fence because we got to protect the lighting since we're going to be placing them up close. Um, tidbit for anyone who might not know, back in the 90s, there were actually big floodlights in the four corners where we now have these camellias. Um, they were taken out, just they were an eyesore, they were a problem, they kept breaking down. Uh, we found the conduit when we were installing the landscaping, that's how we remember they existed. Um, so we realized we couldn't put it back there because people would walk in front of the lights constantly. So we had to bring them inside, which meant now we got to put up some, some protection on them, which also offered us opportunity to protect one of our greatest monuments um, from being climbed on and, and from any potential damages. So fast forward, um, I must give credit to the timing actually to the hurricane and the tropical storm because this would have actually been done in October, uh, but we got delayed a little bit. So as appropriate as it is, we are here now at this time uh, preparing to light it. And uh, we're very thankful for all that everybody's done to get us here. So. You are not I would like to introduce Amy with the Downtown Neighborhood Association. Good evening. On behalf of the Downtown Neighborhood Association, um, we would like to thank Artist Wood for her tireless advocacy for our parks and squares and coming to us with this wonderful idea to give funding for the lighting of the monument. And also thank you to Visit Savannah and the Historic Savannah Foundation and City of Savannah. Thank you. Sorry. And I'd like to introduce Daniel Carey with the Historic Savannah Foundation. And we worked a lot of rehearsing on this program here tonight. I think everybody can tell. Um, thank you, Amy uh, and Gordon and, and, and soon Joe and Bill and Alderman. And you'll say something about your, your counterparts here, I trust, right, Bill? My counterparts? He doesn't like it. I will. Okay, I, don't, I think it's more appropriate that you recognize them. All right. Um, well, uh, does everybody know that book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff? And, it, you know, and then they say it's all small stuff. Some people would say this is small stuff, but it's not. I don't really buy into that book. 
Um, I think the small things are what makes the difference. Um, and when it takes somebody like artists um, kind of prodding the city um, to make us pay attention to things that we should pay attention to and then, and then respond to those needs, I think that's really good. And so what is seemingly a small thing is not a small thing. Um, and actually, your legacy artists, if you will, is, is a continuation of uh, the Lane family's uh, legacy. And Mills B. Lane, the fourth in, protect, in particular of all the many Lanes, was a big fan of Bull Street. And, and the, the Lane family and the Beehive Foundation did a lot to um, make Bull Street what it is today with the lighting and the paving and the Belgian canisters that we can appreciate. And all of that stuff, again, seemingly small stuff, um, but not at all, really, because this is um, the oldest street in the state of Georgia, and therefore it's the most important. And uh, it should be treated respectfully, and it's people like um, the Lane family and artists and, and everybody who contributed um, to this project this evening, um, you know, deserve thanks and, and deserve credit. Uh, so uh, we, we, we played a very small part at Historic Savannah Foundation, but I, but I think, in fact, it was probably DNA and, and artists that came to us and didn't have to twist very hard but said, you need to be part of this, and we said, of course we do. So thank you all for having the vision to do that, um, and then ultimately being executed by the city because we, we probably could not have done this uh, without the city of Savannah, so, so we're grateful to you all. Um, and now, Joe Marinelli with Visit Savannah will, well, if there's anything left to say, he will try to say it. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's all been said. You know, at Visit Savannah, our job is to attract visitors to this beautiful city. And uh, when we do that, we, we do that through marketing. And our marketing is based on research, tons and tons of research. In 2005, we did an image study and asked visitors to, this t to, to Savannah what was most important to them when they come. And you can probably guess what their answers. It was our beautiful hotels, like Mr. Kessler's hotels. It was the great restaurants and the shopping and so forth. And of course, the hospitality of our people. Um, about a year ago, we did something a little different. We did a tourism future study. And, and we, we took a look, instead of what people are used to, we asked, what are you looking for in the future? What's important to you when you come? Well, certainly beautiful hotels are important and great food and restaurants and the hospitality of our people. But at the very top of the list was historic landmarks and the authenticity of our city, the authenticity of the experience of coming to this town. What Savannah has to offer is something that no other city in this country can offer. And, um, and all, it all began with the fellow right behind me here. So uh, we're, we're especially pleased to, uh, to see this event happen tonight. Uh, my social media team is very excited about getting pictures and video of this happening so they can blast it out to everybody around the, uh, around the world. Um, and, uh, but I want to also thank Artis Wood, who, uh, who uh, reached out to me a couple of years ago and said, you need to be involved in this, so thank you. Uh, City of Savannah, thank you for, uh, for your support of this, Gordon. You guys did a great job, but uh, you know our visitors before and our visitors forever will be coming here for this very reason. So I'm really excited about it. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it back to you, Bill. Um, <clears throat> the the um, schedule at this point is a little vague down here, so I'm gonna wing it. Before and do, Gordon wants to say one more thing. Gordon. Actually, I, I failed to mention our employees that are here that helped make this event happen. We have the parks administrator who's hiding in the, in the yonder that's going <laughs> to help us execute the actual lighting. Uh, we have our park supervisor, uh, Greg Pinckney here, who's helping us. And um, Ben Owens, uh, parks employee, he's in the background. He, I can't see him past the lights, but he's back there. So it's the employees that make this happen. Uh, I'm just privileged to work for such a great group. So I just want to make sure we mention them. Thank you, Gordon. And I, and I say this not in any way to sound denigrating, but Gordon's also one of the employees that makes all of this happen. So, um, number one, uh, as uh, Daniel made sure I did this, uh, I, I didn't see them behind the bright lights earlier, but I have two colleagues here 
uh, from City Council, Mayor Pro Tem Carol Bell, uh, Alderman at large, Alderwoman at large, and uh, Alderman Julian Miller from the 4th District. And I appreciate you, you folks coming out tonight. Um, I want to introduce uh, someone to speak for just a minute. And, and the reason I want to do that, even though she's not on the agenda, is uh, several of the folks that have been here have mentioned Artis Wood. Artis, um, I met Artis, it must have been about 25 years ago. And I think when I first met her, long before I had any involvement with city council or city government, she started haranguing me about the lighting in squares. Uh, she was that attuned to the lighting and how the lighting needed to be improved uh, even that early. And so a, a point I guess I want to make here is uh, folks like uh, Alderman Bell and Alderman uh, Miller and I uh, are the front, we're the face of a lot of this activity. But we're not doing any of this. We're basically voting yes or no on stuff but the people that make things happen here are two groups of people it's involved passionate citizens like artists who care about this community and really want to make things happen that are great for this city and then our city staff folks like gordon and the folks that work with him who really work to make this stuff happen and and that's the people that deserve all the credit for this sort of thing so artists did, did you want to make a couple of comments please come up I'm blushing, but you can't see it, I think. <laughs> um, Christian Sotil is not only a good architect, but he knows how to create good lighting. And I was so glad to see SCAD Museum lit by him. I said, who did this? Uh, it's wonderful. And when I found out it was Christian, I said, how did you know how to do it? Because it's just great. He said, well, I went down to Sea Island, and that's a pretty great place at the Cloister. He stayed up till 3 a.m. I think and went around and saw the location, the wattage, the style of lamp and there's a lot of detail in lighting and um, so I knew he did it right because I've studied with some pretty fine people in lighting uh, uh, 25 years ago <laughs> or more and I knew he had it so thank goodness we have a local person who uh, has created for us his first work on lighting and that is here you see the before and the after of the Gordon Monument. He also did the lighting for the uh, design of what is on Tomochichi's rock in Wright Square. So uh, progress to here. And you know, if you do a project right the first time, you only have to do it once. Yet the initial cost can be out of bounds for the city sometimes if you do it right. So that's why a public-private partnership is so important. And that's what we have today with the people that you have just met, all of whom have had their organizations contribute. Um, and we know that this wonderful monument was done by French, who also did the Minutemen at Concord, and many other wonderful things that you can see mocks up of at Stockbridge, Massachusetts. He had a wonderful home, a summer home in, in that community called Chesterwood. And I encourage you to see it. Uh, his studio is great. He has a railroad track that pulls the mock-ups out so he can check the lighting and uh, the shapes that are coming on. And you know, I was most amazed. You learn about artists creating and usually they're poor and they have tragedy in their life. This man was happily married. He never had to worry about money, he had a beautiful house. I thought how nice that an artist can be also a happy person. <laughs> and uh, the base of this is done by the man who built the Lincoln Memorial. They say the finest memorial to man by man that has ever been created. Uh, so these two men collaborated in uh, many situations, and here they did. And French, I'm un, uh, under the impression, said, um, this is my finest work. So we are indeed fortunate to have such a monument uh, here. We're also fortunate to have the private partnerships and public partnerships here. So thank you one and all. 
Now, um, before we light it, uh, in fact, do you want to say a little bit more, or do these folks? Yeah. No? Okay, well, I will. Okay, and then after Bill does, or maybe before, if Barbara would take the flowers off that table, and Judy's going to take the tablecloth off, we're all going to have a, glass of, a little glass of champagne to toast, and you take it from here. We have to drink? No, you don't have to. This is Savannah. <laughs> all right, I, I did want to acknowledge Christian. Oh, is he here? He is here. I saw him here earlier. Goody, Christian. Goody. Thank you. Christian gets involved in a lot of design projects with the city. This is another example of the, uh, the passionate commitment to this community. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. 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 Can I get all the money in front of the money? Can you get straight on the shot?